Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to the Endocrine System Podcast. If you look way up there at that guy, his name is Robert Wadlow. And that guy, I have no idea what his name is, because he's not Robert Wadlow. Robert Wadlow is the tallest man that we have in modern day. He was something like 8 feet 11 and a half inches at the time of his death. And he was that tall because he was a pituitary giant. In other words, he had a tumor, we now know, that was pushing on his uh, pituitary. It was making it produce a hormone called growth hormone, which made him get as tall as he uh, eventually was. And so that wasn't normal. It does put pressure and he died fairly young, just mostly, I think, due to circulation problems, he started to get blood clots. And so basically, it talks a little bit about the endocrine system. When I'm talking about the endocrine system, the other system that's really important to talk about is called the nervous system. So the nervous system, remember, is basically going to be made up of neurons. So you have all these dendrites that come into the cell body. So the cell body looks like this. And then you have an axon that comes way down here. And then you're going to have another neuron down here that's connected with a bunch of dendrites to a cell body. And it's going to move here. Now this distance right here, or excuse me, the separation between the two is called a synapse. A synapse is going to be a gap between neuron one and neuron two. Now, why is the synapse important? Well, we get control over the chemicals that we send. But this podcast isn't about the nervous system. And the reason why is that nerves just travel in one direction, from this neuron to another one neuron to another neuron. They just go in one direction. And so my analogy is it's like Gmail. When you send an email from one person to another person, or they send it from one person to another person. That's like the nervous system. You're sending a message from one person with a clear destination, and that's the nervous system. It goes really fast, and it's going to target a specific cell. And so when do we use the nervous system? When we have to do something really quick. So if somebody were to throw something at me and I were to dodge it, that would be my nervous system that is acting. So the endocrine system is more like Facebook. If I were to post to my Facebook status update that I am working on a cell communication podcast by myself, ironic, and I just put it out there, there's going to be a delay. There's going to be time before other people look at it and dislike it or like it or respond to it. And so that's going to be more like the endocrine system. I'm sending it out to everybody and whoever wants to respond to it can. And so basically keep that in the back of your mind. What are some terms that you should understand? First of all, anything that is going to send out these messages in the endocrine system is called a gland, and we'll go over 10 important glands. The chemical that they send out is called a hormone, and then it's going to target cells or not. It's, it may target certain cells or it may not target other cells. And so we could send, for example, follicular stimulating hormone from the pituitary. It's only going to affect um, the ovaries and the testes. But if we send out growth hormone, that's going to affect all the cells in your body. So what do those hormones do? They simply diffuse throughout your body. They're going to spread throughout your body. And so they are going to bump into cells or not. They're going to spread throughout your whole body. And that's why if you've ever felt like adrenaline, you almost get in a car accident, you just feel like almost something coursing through your body, that's going to be your endocrine system. Now when they find cells, one of two things can happen. If they are a water-soluble hormone, example could be epinephrine or adrenaline, if they're water-soluble, basically what they're going to do is they're going to dock with a protein on the surface of their cell. Since they're water-soluble, they can't gain entry to the cell. And so usually what they'll do is they'll set up some kind of a signal transduction pathway, just have some kind of an action out here, or have another action inside the nucleus where we could make certain specific genes or certain proteins, uh, transcribe certain genes. But that would be water-soluble. We also have what are called lipid-soluble. So testosterone is an example of that. Basically, since it's lipid soluble, it's going to move right through that uh, the lipid bilayer that is the cell membrane, and it also can target with the cell and move right into the nucleus. Because again, there's going to be a lipid bilayer here as well. And so lipid soluble hormones are going to move all the way into the cell. Water soluble are just going to dock with a receptor protein on the surface. And so here's our endocrine system. So endocrine system is not as tightly linked together like the circulatory system, but again, it doesn't have to be because it's sending hormones throughout the whole body. And so basically, we've got glands going all the way up to the top to the from the pineal gland all the way down to the ovaries and the testes and the bottom. And so basically what I want to do is I've chosen 10 glands in the endocrine system, 10 that I think are pretty important. There are more than that. And then I've just chosen one hormone for each of these and we're going to talk about that. So let's talk at, start at the top. First one's going to be the pineal gland. Pineal gland is going to be right here. Basically what the pineal gland is going to secrete is a chemical called melatonin. It does that only when it's nighttime. 
And so if your eyes are open during the day, you're not going to be secreting uh, melatonin. But when you close your eyes at night, um, it's going to start giving off melatonin. And so basically what that does is it allows our brain to tell what time of the day it is, and it also allows us to figure out what season it is. And so basically we can set up what's called our circadian rhythm. So it's basically our internal clock, and it's pineal gland doing that. Next, let's move down here. This part of our brain is actually called the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is kind of the connection between the brain and the endocrine system. And so it can secrete uh, hormones as well, but we're going to say it's influencing the pituitary. We're going to talk about what the pituitary does. Pituitary, basically, if we were to look at it like this, the pituitary, let me blow that up a little bit. So the pituitary is going to go down like this. And so it's going to have two lobes to it. It's going to have the anterior. Anterior means towards the front or towards the head. And then it's going to have the posterior. Posterior is going to be towards your rear end is the best way to think about it. And so what's the anterior pituitary give off? Well, it gives off growth hormone. It gives off a number of other things. It gives off endorphins. It gives off follicular stimulating. It gives off all these different hormones. But one that we're going to talk about is growth hormone. What's growth hormone going to do? Growth hormone, again, is going to float throughout the rest of your body. It can do that in the circular system or throughout the interstitial fluid and basically it's going to cause the cells to grow so they're going to get bigger. If we talk about the next one anterior or excuse me posterior pituitary um, it gives off oxytocin but the one important hormone we're going to talk about is antidiuretic hormone or ADH and so antidiuretic hormone well, you've, you know what diarrhea is, and so what is antidiuretic? Antidiuretic is going to be a hormone that holds on to fluids inside our body. Um, where is that going to go? It's going to go to our kidney, because our kidney is in control of osmoregulation. What's the next one? Next one, as we work our way down, is going to be the thyroid. So we're going to move all the way down here. This would be the thyroid glands. It's right in here. Um, basically, it does two things that are important. It gives off what are called T3 and T4. Those hormones and the numbers relate to the number of iodine, or excuse me, iodine atoms that are found within it. And so basically, you've maybe heard of a goiter when you get an inflamed thyroid. Basically, what our, our um, thyroid does is it regulates metabolism. And so it's going to give off these two chemicals, T3 and T4, and that's going to speed up metabolism inside our body. And so if you have a hyperactive thyroid, that you have high metabolism. If you have a... Uh, inactive thyroid, then you're going to have really slow metabolism. And so basically it's control of that. And the other thing that it does is it secretes something called calcitonin. And again, endocrine systems are really important in feedback loops. And so the calcium that we have in our blood, the level that we have is super important, uh, especially in nerves and in muscle firing. If we don't have the correct amount of blood calcium, we're going to die. And so basically what the thyroid does is that when you secrete the thyroid, it's going to lower the calcium. Well, where's the calcium going to going to go. It's going to go back into the, um, we're going to excrete some through the kidneys, but it's going to go back into the bones. And so um, there's another hormone that kind of goes with that. And so this looks like a butterfly, but there are going to be these tiny little hormones in here called the parathyroid. They sit right within the thyroid and they're going to secrete something called parathyroid hormone. What does that do? Well, if the blood calcium level goes too low, it's going to raise the blood calcium. And so these two, the thyroid and the parathyroid are going to work together um, to basically keep the blood calcium level correct. Um, it's the same way that insulin and glucagon work in the pancreas. Speaking of which, let's go to the next one. And so the pancreas, it's kind of hard to see in this diagram, but the pancreas is going to sit right here. It's again behind the stomach and it's going to empty right here into the duodenum. So it's going to empty enzymes in here. But it's also on its surface, it's got beta and alpha cells that are going to secrete insulin and glucagon. Insulin is going to be secreted if we ever need to lower the blood sugar and glucagon if we ever need to raise the blood sugar. So basically what insulin does is when it's secreted, it allows our cells to take in that blood sugar, that glucose. And glucagon, when we release that, it's going to release more of that insulin from uh, glycogen that's found right here in the liver. So that's the pancreas. Uh, on the top of our kidneys, so these would be our kidneys right here, on the top of them we have our adrenal glands. The adrenal glands have two parts to it. The adrenal cortex is going to be on the outside. The adrenal cortex is basically what it does is secretes glucocorticoids. And so if you ever have an injury, and you get huge amount of inflammation in it, they secrete anti-inflammatories. And so if you've ever taken an anti-inflammatory example, be like Advil, basically the glucocorticoids are gonna do the same thing. 
They don't need to act right away. And so these are actually connected by hormones to the pituitary. So the message can come from the brain. We have an injury down to the pituitary and eventually to the adrenal cortex. But that's not what you're familiar with in the adrenal gland. You're familiar with adrenaline. And so there's a nervous connection from the brain all the way down here to the center of the adrenal gland. That's called the adrenal medulla. Basically, what is it going to have it do? It's going to secrete epinephrine. Epinephrine is adrenaline. It's going to go throughout your body, and it's going to trigger that fight or flight response. And so, again, if you almost get in a car accident, nervous system is going to allow you to kind of not get in that car accident. But after that, you're going to feel this adrenaline coursing through your body. Your metabolism is going to speed up. You're going to suppress like your... Uh, um, digestive system, you're, you're going to become more alert, and that's all as a result of the adrenal medulla. Okay, next we've got, uh, down at the bottom, we just have the sex hormones and the, and the sex glands. We've got the ovaries, and so this would be in females, and then the testes if we're talking about males. Ovaries are going to give off estrogen, uh, testes are going to give off testosterone, among other things, but basically those are responsible for your female and male sex characteristics. Now when you go through puberty, before you go through puberty, they're not really cranking out a lot of estrogen and testosterone. But once you go through puberty, they're getting a signal from the pituitary gland that says now it's time to make these uh, sex hormones and then we get those secondary sex characteristics. Okay, so how'd you do? Can you remember the 10 glands? Can you remember the hormones that they secreted and what they did? Well, let's try. Okay, so as we go through this, testes, where they found be found right down here. What do they do? They give off testosterone. That's right. What about the ovaries? Where are they found? Ovaries are going to be found right here. What do they give off? Estrogen. That's right. <laughs> Sorry for the awkward pause. It's like Dora the Explorer. Next we've got the adrenal medulla. Where's that found? Yeah, that's the green. What do they give off? That's right. Epinephrine. Let's go to the next one. Adrenal cortex. Where's that? It's going to be the yellow part, remember, around the adrenal gland. What do they give off? I bet you've forgotten this. Those are glucocorticoids. They're going to be anti-inflammatories. What's next? That's going to be the pancreas. Pancreas is found right here. What's it give off? Insulin, glucagon. Those regulate blood uh, sugar. Let's go to the next one. Where's the parathyroid? That's right. That's going to be within the thyroid. They used to actually, when people get goiters, they'd cut parts of the thyroid out. And the person would immediately die because they didn't understand what the parathyroid did. So uh, parathyroid is going to be inside here. What's it going to secrete? Parathyroid hormone. That's right. And that's going to raise blood calcium. Right above that, we've got the thyroid. Thyroid is going to give off two things. Can you remember those? It's going to give off calcitonin. That's going to lower blood calcium. And it's also going to give off T3 and T4. Okay, let's go to the next one. Posterior pituitary. So that's going to be way up here. What does that give off? Antidiuretic hormone, that's right. And that's going to keep our body holding on to the, uh, the water, retaining water. And then we've got the anterior pituitary, so in the front, that gives off a lot of things. Do you remember what it gives off? Thinking back to Robert Wadlow, right, it gives off growth hormone. That's going to cause our cells to grow. And finally, we've got the pineal gland. Pineal gland, close your eyes, you're going to start secreting melatonin. That's right. And that allows us to sync up our circadian rhythm. So these are the top 10 glands, top 10 hormones. And I hope that's all helpful.